SBC Media. Welcome to iGaming Daily, analysing the news from the betting and gaming industry all over the globe. Supported by SBC Summit Latino America, bringing together the leadership teams and product specialists from retail and online operators in Latin American markets. Discover the potential of Latin America's booming iGaming and sports betting markets at SBC Summit Latin America, the premier industry event in the region. Join SPC at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Miami from October 31st to November the 2nd. Register now at spcevents.com. At the recent Casino Beat Summit in Malta, Ed Dickerson, the co-founder and chief operating officer at, of Greco, took to the leadership and affiliation stage in a panel titled Bonus Abuse Just Went Viral in Latam. This is what he had to say on today's episode of I Came In Daily, sponsored by SBC Summit Barcelona. Uh, my name is Ed Dickerson. I'm the co-founder, um, the CPO, the COO, and many other Cs, so therefore the C3PO of Greco. Um, just as a very quick introduction, Greco, our uh, software solution, uh, we are the only uh, company doing uh, anything similar to what we do, which is to uh, identify gameplay risk. Um, to uh, primarily to deal with bonus abuse and uh, to, to give the best behavioral insights from a risk perspective on a player-by-player -player basis in real time. Um, so we're super fortunate as a company to be in a position where uh, we get to see a lot of gameplay data uh, for a lot of companies in a lot of different areas. And really today's, um, today's story is really to talk about uh, a pretty recent um, event, if you like, that's happened uh, that we've identified in Brazil specifically. And um, really the story is um, quite crazy uh, in, in all means. So um, uh, before we go into the real detail of the story, I will just give a little bit of context. Um, you will be, of course, able to submit questions and I'm very um, keen for you to do so as we go through, but I'll answer some of the basic things so we don't have to answer them at the end. Um, so, so really just to summarize, bonus abuse as a blanket term really just means um, where a player is intentionally trying to affect the value of a bonus to make a profit. So there are many behaviors, many strategies of how you can do that, and it's an intentional process that could involve simply... Um, Use taking an advantage, such as taking a higher RTP to minimize the uh, losses they have through bonus completion, or it could be uh, essentially a cheating strategy, which is the topic today where people completely get around the uh, rules and the terms that are set up on the offer, such as, for example, the 40 times turnover, and the, the players are simply looking to evade those terms and to convert the bonus funds into cash in uh, a super efficient way that maximizes their profits. And so, um, really, let me jump one slide forward here. So th there's a bit on this slide. Um, I've kept very little detail. It's really about the story today. Um, so really, uh, the, the form of abuse, the form of bonus abuse that I want to, to highlight to you guys today is what we call persistent slots abuse. And so this is the abuse of um, slot games primarily, which have a form of persistence to the game, which retains value. Uh, and to give a really simple example of how uh, this is exploited in, um, from a player's perspective, is if you say, okay, you deposit 100, you get 100 bonus, and you need to convert this 100 bonus to cash by turning your bonus over 40 times, a pretty standard uh, offer across the industry. Uh, what a player can do is use their bonus funds and build up the progression within a game. So if you think maybe the player needs to collect 10 tokens whilst they're spinning a slot, once they've collected 10 tokens, they have a free spins bonus round. So what the player will look to do is to play this type of game and get to nine out of 10 tokens collected with bonus funds, and then later come back once the bonus is finished with cash funds, trigger that last token, and magically all of their bonus funds have converted to cash completely outside of the control of the bonus engine logic. So it's a very, very um, clean way of converting bonus funds to cash in a way that the 
operator believes that they've uh, made a profit from you because you've lost all your cash, you've lost all your bonus, you didn't complete the bonus wagering, and they're happy that their, their bonus promotion is looking successful. However, the player will subsequently win with cash, and the operators will often just deem that as luck, uh, which is, of course, incorrect. So th this form of abuse is really, um, if we talk about European markets, really quite a niche process. It's... Um, 90% bonus conversion. Bonus conversion is not quite the right word because the player never completes the wagering requirements of an offer. But if you think quite simply, if you give a player 100 uh, euros of bonus, they will convert on average, they will come away with 90 euros cash profit at the end of the process. So it's a highly, highly uh, efficient abuse process that is known by very few people across Europe. It does tend to be known by um, syndicates, by multi-accounting groups, fraud groups, uh, that have many, many accounts behind them. So there'll be one ringleader, one um, fraudster, if you like, maybe with hundreds, maybe with thousands of accounts, and they will use this abuse process um, to consistently abuse the industry and, and make a good living. Um, but it's known by very few people, uh, and it's really quite a close guarded secret. It's not something uh, that you can go on to, to the internet to find out about. It's not uh, publicly available. If you look onto bonus abuse forums, uh, which are websites that you can go to, pay a monthly subscription, and be given guides on how to target promotions in a profitable way, it doesn't have this on there because it's too niche, it's too valuable, and it's simply not available to the public. Um, but really, the story for, for LATAM and Brazil specifically is uh, some of the work we've been doing is. Um, <laughs> One particular brand uh, that are operating in Brazil, very big brand, um, suddenly started seeing a spike in abuse. And that's what you'll see from the, the graph at the bottom is that how the abuse um, grew over time. And to give, there's no access on here at all, so I apologize. Uh, but each, uh, each bar on the graph is one day. Uh, and what we saw was a 3,000% increase in um, attempts of bonus abuse of this nature um, that came in, in essentially the space of a week or two. Uh, and where this abuse came from is completely different to how information is shared in the UK. It came from YouTube. Um, and so to give the context here, the, the YouTubers that were promoting this really niche form of bonus abuse that is worth huge amounts of money, um, the YouTubers, they're not bonus abuse YouTubers. They're not people that live and breathe this stuff every day. They're just YouTubers that have a big following already that promote money-making schemes, uh, get-rich-quick schemes, trading bots, crypto tips, this kind of stuff. And they've come across this form of bonus abuse, and they're putting it out there to their audience so they can get more likes and subscribes, um, which is great for them. Um, and so what happened in a very short space of time was people were going through, seeing this YouTube clip on how to exploit uh, a particular site in a particular way, um, and they're following it through and making a profit and telling their friends. Uh, and it just went viral really, really quickly. In the space of a couple of weeks, there was over 100,000 um, players, so way more than 100,000 views in this time, but 100, over 100,000 players going on to this one site in Brazil and exploiting this process using a handful of different games. And traditionally, if, if you see this kind of spike in abuse in Europe, you can normally deal with it in many different ways. You would see trends in the registration data and the payment data because it's normally part of one fraud ring as part of one multi-accounting group or syndicate. And you can identify quite often that the players are linked through these means. Uh, but in Brazil, it's a completely different story because the players are not linked in anything other than where they got their source of information from. And so there's no way of stopping these players until they've had their bonus, they've gone through their abuse process, and you have to be able to say, this player cheated us, or this player played genuinely, and you have to make that decision. So when you have 100,000 people in the space of a couple of weeks do this process, um, I don't know how big your operational team would need to be to be able to do this on a manual case-by-case -case basis. Um, but if you're going, okay, we've got 100,000 withdrawals pending, let's go and review them all one by one, um, that's a lot of man hours. <laughs> That's a long delay in your payments going out to the players. Um, and, and it really relies on the, the knowledge and the expertise of the, the team that are reviewing the withdrawals. And it's also too late because the player has already converted their bonus funds to cash. If you want to confiscate from 100,000 players, goodbye reputation. It's gone. You're, they're going to complain. They're going to 
um, go through uh, dispute, dispute media companies and cause you a nightmare. So it's too late. The money generally has to go out the door. Um, and, and this is what happened in Brazil. And it's, it's, this is uh, data, sorry, I should also give you the context. Um, it, it starts in February and goes into March towards the end. So it's a very recent thing. And what we were also quite um, privileged to, to be in a situation is where we also have data in other uh, brands in LATAM. Uh, and, and what we saw in the weeks following this spike where uh, YouTubers were targeting one brand with one form of specialist bonus abuse is we saw that other brands in the following weeks suffered the same thing. They saw spikes in exactly the same type of abuse just a few weeks later. And so it's quite uh, natural, I think quite obvious, quite organic, that the players that have gone onto this site and done this abuse process have gone, I wonder if I can play the same game and do the same thing on another site. And of course you can. There's no um, physical difference from one site to the next in terms of how this abuse process works. And so what's happened is 100,000 players uh, in the space of a few weeks have learned this abuse process. They can take it to many different operators. They can tell their friends and they can um, use really probably the, the best bonus abuse tactic um, and tell their friends and it's really a gateway into bonus abuse. And so then they'll be looking at other forms of bonus abuse, maybe on sports or other abuse processes. And so it's really, um, really a, a wild situation. Uh, and it's certainly something that LATAM isn't ready for. So really, um, where should we go next from here? So let me jump on to the next slide. I, I just want to draw a contrast between how LATAM have been dealing with this abuse that's just suddenly overnight hit them really hard in the face. Um, so firstly, they, they have some systems to identify some problems. Um, but when it comes to this, like I said, if you deal with it retrospectively, it's too late. You need to deal with it in the moment. And so what, what do you do? You look at the platform you have, you look at the tools you have, you look at the staff that you have, and you think, what can we do to solve this? Maybe you'll look at Europe and you'll think, well, hey, how do Europe deal with this? Um, and the honest answer is not very well. Uh, and so there's, it, it's a difficult situation. Um, really what LATAM have been doing uh, in the immediate impact from this is taking, um, analyzing their data, seeing which games have been exploited, the ones where they've lost tons of money to, and that's a simple GDR report. This game is in the red, this game is in the red. Uh, have a quick look at the game. Okay, I can see how it's being exploited and take it down off the site, e either fully or prevent bonus play on this game. Um, and this means, um, you know, Firstly, they've got a big operational headache in terms of reviewing all of this. They're incurring losses all of the time. Um, and uh, the, the amount of content, the amount of slots out there that have features which are persistent that hold value is around 20% of the games released in the last three years. And so what this means, if they're to do, continue with this methodology of removing the games, 20% of the content they have live now will simply be taken down from bonus play. Not ideal. Uh, and that, that's also what much of Europe does. Um, so they lose their money to the players. The players jump from one game to the next. They lose some more money. And they take all their content down. It's really not a solution. Um, so, so really, uh, th this slide is just to touch on the lessons for the rest of the world. So, so this is kind of uh, <laughs> shaking Europe uh, to wake up to this as much as emerging markets to say, the way you deal with it is not based on retrospective analysis. Um, it's to think of proactive solutions. So um, really, I, I guess this is the point where I'll give my own company a little plug here. This is one of the specialities that we deal with. And really, uh, I'll tell you how to fix it. <laughs> you can go and do this yourself, right? You need to understand on a game by game basis exactly how the game works, how the feature works, what the gameplay patterns for that individual game are and deal with it in real time. So when a player starts to show risk, you take action on the player there and then before they've converted their bonus funds to cash before you have a problem. Um, and that's what our Greco tool does right now today. Um, it does that for you. We've tested endless games. Uh, I used to have hair, I tested loads of games, now I have none. And um, you can go and do this yourself too. <laughs> um, so really, uh, Greco is a behavioral recognition platform. We analyze uh, looking specifically for uh, patterns of um, bonus abuse within the gameplay in real time to enable real time actioning. And one of the most powerful 
uh, things you can do is not confiscate, not close accounts necessarily, but to deal with the player in the moment. And one of the most powerful things you can do is simply have a pop-up to the player. So if you put yourselves into the mind of a bonus abuser just for a second, you're going through your process of bonus abuse. You deposit, you take the bonus, you start going onto these games and trying to cheat them. And partway through, you get a pop-up on the screen saying, hey, please be reminded of the terms and conditions that state you simply cannot do that. If you're a genuine player, you're just thinking of some spammy box, click it, carry on with your day, no damage to your user experience. If you're a bonus abuser, you're like, damn, they've caught me. Big brother moment. And um, you simply stop trying. Maybe you'll try another game. Maybe you'll try on a different account that you have access to. And you'll get the same thing over and over again. Then simply, uh, if players cannot complete the process without being caught, uh, without having a risk of the operator confiscating their funds in a... Uh, fair way, um, then they will simply stop trying the abuse. And so uh, I won't jump back to the previous slide, but what you'll see at the end of the previous slide was the abuse came up massively, 3,000%. These kind of actions started being taken, and within a few days, the abuse had gone um, significantly down. And within a, uh, the space of two and a half to three weeks, the, the, single, the, the numbers went from tens of thousands per day to less than 10 per day. Thank you for listening to today's episode of iGaming Daily, brought to you in conjunction with SBC Summit Latino America, being held at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Miami on the 31st of October to the 2nd of November. If you want to find out more about some of the subjects raised today, feel free to explore any of the sites in the SBC News Network. Happy reading.